Hello, good afternoon, and good morning, and good evening, wherever you may be, and welcome to the MMA Shower, sponsored by Hatton James Legal. That's HattonJamesLegal.co.uk for all your employment needs, and also sponsored by Overst Events oversteevents.com for your hospitality needs. This month's episode we shall preview UFC 296, that's UFC 296, uh, Ed, Edwards versus Covington for the uh, world welterweight champion, UFC champion of the world. And uh, one more thank you for uh, from our friends from SRB Media, that's srbmedia.co.uk. Go to the website and there's a range of podcasts from football to music and and a few other uh, genres as well. So that's srbmedia.co.uk. You can uh, contact the show by emailing the MMA show, the MMA shower seven, the MMA shower seven at gmail.com. And uh, we're always happy to receive your emails and you can contact us through Twitter and, and Facebook as well. Okay, going into the uh, into the podcast itself, and like to uh, welcome the uh, co-host of the podcast, Matt from Purely MMA. Hello, Matt. How are you? Good evening. It's uh, it doesn't feel like it's been so long since our last show, but um, pleasure as always, mate. And uh, a really good, strong card to end the year on. And it, it, you know, next year is going to be a big year for UFC, so it's good to end the year on a strong one and kick off the the, the big new year yeah i think uh, it's pretty traditional that the the december card is is normally stacked and packed with names and and sometimes two title fights so uh, i don't think they've uh, disappointed us this time yeah i mean this card for me personally would be like a good ufc 300 card um so they're really they're really spoiling us and the past couple of events as we know has been late dropouts and people coming up at short notice so hopefully this recording will stay intact and will make sense because hopefully all the fighters stay fit and healthy fingers crossed and touch wood yeah we we hope there's no uh dropouts in the last sort of week so uh yeah it should be a a very uh intriguing and exciting uh card so we're going to preview three to four fights on this card because as we said there's there's a lot of names on the card and card and there's Kobe Carbrandt is number seven sort of way down the list and um, that just tells you the uh, the depth of the card so uh, I think we'll we'll start with um, I would call it a strange matchup a weird matchup I don't know if you agree with that but Tony Ferguson I think he's on a six fight losing streak and Paddy Pimlet, who's up and coming, you know, new star, blah blah blah, whatever, whatever uh, sort of uh, verbiage you want to give Paddy. Um, but uh, that's that's a, a weird and an interesting and an odd matchup all in one. Well, I I think fights with Tony Ferguson are weird anyway, um, but <laughs> I, I like it. Yeah, I, I like it. I think it's a it's a good name for Paddy Pimlet. He wants somebody that's going to put him his own name in the minds of casual fans and hardcore fans and I think this does that perfectly and at one point Tony Ferguson was a title contender so it it fits the bill it ticks the boxes for Paddy Pimler and it Tony Ferguson always helps a, a card and always gets a, more eyes on it so it, even with the losing streak I think it works Any can you see any risk for Paddy? If he loses, yes, I, I, I can see risk because if you lose it, people, you know, the obvious criticism will be, well, you lost to a guy who is on the way out, and um, unlikely. But I mean, there's always risk. Any UFC fight you're going to take, there's always risk. Um, you just got to make sure that you don't skip any corners and make sure you're ready for this fight because I still think Tony Ferguson has a lot of weapons that can hurt him for sure. Yeah. Weapons, not including his sharp, uh, you know, wit and uh, comments, probably. Yeah, and metal bones that he's probably got 
you know, surgically put into his body and whatever else that he's had done to himself, Tony Ferguson. I mean, yeah. the, the stories that we've had from him from the past years have been pretty crazy, haven't they? So, mm. but uh, I think Paddy's been out for nearly a year. It was was it Gerard Gordon? His last win that was maybe ten months ago, at the start of the year. Yeah, and that was a dodgy one. I think mm. um, very close. It had it had plenty of controversy around it. So, but it, it seems that his name is growing in the, mm. in the minds of all UFC fans for sure. Yeah, and then after that fight, he he left the cage hobbling, and then he I think I don't think it was a broken, maybe it was a fracture on his foot, and then he had an operation. So uh, he's been out for a while, and he's had a bit of surgery, but you know he's he's must have fully recovered, and uh, yeah, I, I think that Paddy. Yeah, there, there's always a risk, but uh, this is a calculated risk. As you say, he's, he's capturing a name on his CV. Will that catapult him up the lightweight rankings? Yeah, I, I don't know by how much, but maybe a few places up. Yeah, and I think I think Dana White sees dollar signs with him. I think I think he's an attractive proposition. Even with UK fans, it's kind of a love hate relationship. But I think the guys over in America really love his his Britishness if you want to call it that mm. um, if they can understand it, him of course yeah it's kind of like the English Conor McGregor vibe yeah. from him where yeah. you know he says what he thinks he doesn't really care mm. um, but very similar to like the Sean O'Malley kind of rise that he had as well yeah exciting in the cage um, let's just hope that he stayed in good shape when he was off injured because it, it, you're right it has been about a year um, and he was infamous for the weight changes so it'll be interesting to see if he's sort of stayed in better shape and maybe trained slightly better when he was injured yeah the, the discipline uh, when, you, when you're not fighting uh, Paddy doesn't mind an, an expanding waistline shall we say and I, I, I do get it. He said, I think he said something along the lines of, I'd rather be fat and happy than have a six pack and be miserable. But mm. it's not about that. It's kind of about your health. Mm. And you can't be training at the highest level if you're sort of 30 pounds over what you should be at. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And, and it's the, the weight cut he has to do when he you know has an eight week or 12 week fight camp. It's, harder than if he was only 10 pounds overweight or 15 so there is a physical stress on his body but he's young he can handle it he looks like he and you're right the mainstream element he has got that going he's got you know a podcast I think on the the Gerard Gordon fight he, he had a podcast and Dana White was on it and they both ripped Ariel Hawani which was a, a weird one but yeah he's got he's got a YouTube channel and he goes to America go, eating at these Italian restaurants and yeah, he's got a bit of he's a bit of a mainstream vibe about him, and he's he's definitely pushing for that. So he and he, he openly says it. He says, "Look, I'm a commodity, and if I make UFC money, I make money as well." So he's unashamedly admitting that, which is which is fine. It is a promotion, and why not? He he knew how to make money from the from the off. So uh, you know you can't really criticize him for that, and it kind of gets on the wrong side of me personally it doesn't it's not something I'm interested in it kind of it's a bit grating but from where he's from in the UK you know he's, he's from Liverpool and they kind of have a love-hate relationship with the rest of the country anyway so uh, something Americans I don't think entirely get mm. yeah okay I suppose we, we should give it a prediction um, I'm, I'm not going to have any surprises but Oh, it sh it should be a paddy win. Um, let's go with submission because why not? Mm. I think it will finish on its feet and Paddy will TKO. Uh, we'll we'll see what happens. And uh, I hope Tony doesn't get too beat up because the last four or five fights he's had a and obviously that front kick from um, Michael Chandler was a pretty brutal, shall we say? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was the 
was that the only time in his career that he was knocked clean out cold for, uh, with, with uh, a loss? I believe so. Um, yeah. so, so although he's been, he's had a good chin for the rest of his career, you, you don't know what that does to a guy, and mm. he, he does seem to be a bit open to submission losses. So, yeah. It, it could it could be either it could be either or but I think we're both agreement on the Paddy Pimlet win. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think another uh, interesting fight is uh, Vicente Luque versus Ian Gary um, at welterweight. Um, Ian Gary making a lot of noise. Is it the right noise? Who knows? But he's he's making a lot of noise and uh, Vicente Luque tough as they come and. He's always in a war, so that's an interesting matchup. Super tough. Um, it, it, Ian Gary, a, another one of those guys who seems to be just you, you know grabbing the attention no matter what. Obviously, you don't want to get on the wrong side of Dana because he's the one who, at the end of the day, butters your bread and signs the checks. Um, this fight for me has all the hallmarks of a stepping stone fight for Ian Gary. Um, Luke on the on on the way, not on the way out of his career. He's only thirty two, but they're going in different directions. I would say. Yeah, if you look at the trajectory, then you're right. Sort of Ian Gary is on the way up. Vicente Luque, maybe you could say not quite on the way down, but sort of a horizontal dip, if that's possible. But he's sort of moving sideways with a win. You know, he's the kind of fighter that could re-spark his uh, ascend to the to the title. Uh, and uh, but Ian Gary, that would be a almost like a leapfrog move for him, I think, if he wins. And if he wins in style, of course. Yeah, for sure. And I think Ian Gary has Conor McGregor on his side, which always helps. Um, maybe not in the cage; it doesn't help. Um, but it always helps your name and the pool that you have mm. yeah and obviously an incredible record as well I mean he's really starting to actually beat some genuine contenders now with beating Neil Magny 13-0 it, it has the hallmarks of a, of a stepping stone fight of course anything could happen when you step in there um, but yeah do you think uh, Ian Gary's got the world championship sort of stamped on his head well, I, I, only 26, you, 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 it, it's up to your personal opinion. I think he possibly could do, for sure. Um, in the welterweight division, you've, you have got a, a, lot, a load of guys going down and only a couple coming back up, so it could be good timing for him, for sure. Mm. And Vicente Luque, if, if he needs to get into a brawl, he will, and uh, make it, you know violent and bloody so um, maybe Ian Gary hasn't seen that in his career yet so if Vicente Luque can do that then uh, you know it puts him puts him in a strong position yeah he could spice it up for sure um, but Ian Gary he's not going to go untouched he is going to have to have these kind of fights so he's going to have to have it at some point so now's a good time yeah it's uh, on the road to being uh, a world champion you've got to expect uh, a war or two on your journey yeah, and he's, and he's still only 26. So I'm sure he'll have plenty more on the way up. OK, uh, prediction time. What you think uh, it sounds like you're going to go for Ian Gary? Yeah, Ian Gary. Um, knockout win, I think. I, I know I know Vicente Luque is, is well-hardened, battle-hardened. Um, but, yeah, like I said, this is, has all the signs of a, of a stepping stone fight for Ian Gary. And could be something really big for the division I think could add, add some excitement to the division yeah for, for sure some some fresh blood um, we don't want a situation which happened in the heavyweight division with the UFC for a long time where there was just sort of no fresh blood coming through obviously divisions are going to have ups and downs and, and moments where the guys at the top that have always been there are going to come down but could be a real contender very shortly for sure yeah yeah if you're yeah. selling fights yeah. At the end, I, I, I always say, I think, for a number of our predictions that at the end of the day, UFC is a business. And if you're bringing eyes on the product, then 
Dana White is going to look on you pretty favourably. Um, sometimes good eyes, sometimes bad eyes. It all, it all works and it all brings in money. Mm. I've not really read the stories too deeply, but I've heard he's been kicked out of a couple of gyms. Do you think that's a concern that uh, he may be taking his uh, persona a bit too far? Potentially. Um I don't know if it's been confirmed about the the gym stuff. I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't really heard concrete stuff on it. Um, but it, it, can't, it can't be good if it, if it is true and that he is not in a solid background. I mean, that's what Connor always had. Even even when he was at the top, he had that solid base around him. Mm, yeah, the the S, SBG Island. Yeah. Okay, um, I think uh, yeah. So you're you're predicting uh, a knockout win for Luke? Uh, sorry, for Gary. Yes. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I think I'm going to go for Gary as well, and I think it'll be a submission, maybe in the second or third round, if if it becomes a battle. Yeah. Which it probably will, to be fair. Mm. Yeah. Okay, we'll jump to the co-main event, which is Alexandra Pantoa uh, versus Brandon Royale, and that's the flyweight uh, division fight, so, and it's a title fight as well. So uh, that's uh, quite been quite a few changes in the flyweight in the last sort of four or five years. Demetrius Johnson, he was flyweight, wasn't he? Yeah, he he left, and uh, then it was uh, Henry Cejudo, and then. What do you think about that title fight? Should be really exciting. Um, and you bring up a good point there about the, the change in the division. Um, I think it's actually really rescued it. Uh, there was a couple of years there where Dana White thought he was going to cut the division completely. Mm-hmm. So yeah. He publicly it, said it, I thing. think. It's, yeah. it's kept eyes on the division and it, it could have rescued it. But this should be a real close one between two fantastic wrestlers obviously the grand games are going to be superb mm. um, the first fight I was re-watching it for the before we came on air and the first fights had some fantastic exchanges on the ground and on the feet so to, to have this as a co-main to to see the year out is a is a good one yeah I think um, like you said I think it's going to be a case of uh They'll probably end up on the map fairly quickly on the canvas, and then uh, there'll be some really good exchanges. And uh, it'll depend on who probably makes the least mistakes on the ground and uh, can sort of impose their will and, and style on the on the other other fighter. But um, yeah, and it's I know Pantoja's got eight knockouts uh, wins I think and I, I think both of them would say that that's not what they're going to be at the best and it could be a real entertaining sort of wrestling based ground gate um, ground based fight mm. and it is one that will be interesting it's not like going to be one of those well fights that sometimes Covington can go into where it's a bit a bit holdy mm. and not much happens I, d- I don't think it'll be like that I think it's more of an exciting based sort of ground fighting game yeah, where, where you can you can sense a finish any time. Yeah. yeah, for sure, and it, it, that's what their weight class is sort of based on, and it has been for years. Um, I think Pantoja is on to another level now. Uh, he's got three performances of a, of a night in a row, um, and I, I really liked Brandon Moreno. I thought he was going to be the next big mm. sort of long length champion, but. Pantoja got the win over Moreno and that's no small feat for sure yeah yeah now that's a good point about uh, him beating Brandon Moreno so um, yeah looking at their submission wins uh, Roy Val has got nine submissions and Pantoja has got ten so they're very equal on those based how they finish fight via submission so that's good to know yeah it's just exciting they just I, I know their weight class helps because they are a lot smaller and lighter and quick on the feet but that they use it very well and it's, it's very exciting to watch okay prediction time uh, I'm going to go Pantoja submission win I, I just think Pantoja is on another level um, mm. to, to beat Moreno was 
that step up for him. Mm. Um, but the, the way that this weight class is going, I actually would not be surprised if then Roy, Roy Val ends up winning this another title change and another mm. short length reign. I wouldn't be surprised. And with their styles, you know, one slip up, one second of lack of concentration. Mm. And Pantoja could be in a real tough spot. But I think he's got the skills for sure to manage it. And mm. I think he should come out with the win. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree pretty much. I'm, I'm just going to err on the side of uh, Roy Val. And maybe he can find a submission. Um, or maybe even a ground and pound if he, if he can get... Uh, his ground gate game to be dominant, so uh, but it's extremely close. I, I can see Pentoja winning as well, so it's not one of those where, yeah, it's a very uh, balanced, uh, balanced sort of uh, prediction, I think. Yeah, for sure. But like you said, um, it was a very good point that it, it could change. This division has been pretty crazy the past couple of years, and it, even when it was at the very heights and you thought well no this is going to be the guy to take it forward it, it then just changes mm-hmm. so it, it's, it's a good one it might not get the eyes that say the 145 and above get it might not get the the hype from the fans but for hardcore fans it, it really should be it, you know it's one of the most exciting yeah if you appreciate grappling wrestling ground game at an extremely high level and then it's 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 one for those kind of fans. Yeah, and I think there is a hope that maybe one day Demetrius Johnson will return to the UFC. Um, I, th- I, b- I believe he's put on a lot of muscle since he's been away because I think the drug testing is a little bit less where he is currently. But mm. I think there might be some good fights down the road if he returns one day. Okay, we'll we'll go to the the main event and. Uh... This is Edwards versus Covington. Uh, Leon Rocky Ed- Edwards versus Colby Chaos Covington. And um, it seems like they've been talking about this forever. And then there was a, a period where there was a, almost like a campaign that Covington shouldn't get this. I don't think Edwards wanted to fight him for sure. But there was other fighters saying, no, Covington shouldn't get it. So uh, it seems like a while be- until this happens or, you know, in, in the build-up. Yeah, and it, like, can you believe it's been 18 months since we saw Colby actually fight his, his last fight? Wow, that but was I, Masvidal. Yeah, I, I had no idea it was that long. Oh. Um, it's a bit un, unbelievable, really, that it's been that long. But I think for a long time it was a big belief that Colby was and has been the best of the rest. Mm. So obviously he, he had those two title fights which he lost, but then he beat everybody else. So I think everybody, even though 90% of people couldn't stand the guy and his persona, I think everybody knew, apart from Kamaru Usman, he was the best of out of everybody else. So the fact that he actually wasn't the one to take the title and it was Edwards, I'm not mad at this fight at all. Mm. I, I think he is the right kind of name to take it on because if he loses this, then everybody can say, well, it turns out he wasn't the best of the rest. But if Colby turns around after 18 months out and wins this and wins the title, I think he would have cemented himself fully as the best of everybody else. Yeah, I, I agree with that uh, overall assessment. And uh, But in terms of a stylistic matchup, um, what what's your thoughts on that? Well, I'm going to go out on a limb here, OK, and say from the very start, and say this will be a domination. I think Edwards has had an incredible run, for sure, okay? Two solid wins over arguably the greatest at this weight class. But I think this could be Covington's crowning moment, and I think he's more likely to be the one to take the division and the belt forward. Um, and I just, I just, like I said, I, th- I think he has been the best of the rest, and I think his wrestling style is so good. I know we haven't seen him for 18 months, 16 to 18 months, so I don't know what his shape is like. I'm not sure what his form is going to be, but he, you know his, his two losses have been very close contests, and I just think he has the guts to beat everybody else. 
Yeah, I, I think from a stylistic matchup, I think um, Edwards has probably got a bit more timing when he fought Nate Diaz. He, he was fairly crisp and and you know he doesn't get flustered too much. Covington, he's got good timing, but he he can seem a bit. Um, sort of uncoordinated but he, he has got good good overhand right and, and then a left um, Edwards has actually got good wrestling defence and, and good takedown but he, he won't have the level of takedown as uh, Colby Cummington he's been wrestling since he was what, six or seven years old um, yeah. but Covington's wrestling is, is very much hold um, if you look if you looked at the Masvidal fight he was he wasn't destroying Masvidal on the ground. He was holding and, and putting pressure on. But E. Covington says, and a lot of people say about Covington, his cardio is a weapon. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think you brought up some great points there. And it's, I was going to say that a little bit later, that it's like Leon Edwards, I think, is the better striker potentially. But I don't think it's as spectacular, powerful, not like a huge amount of damage builds from his striking same as Covington with his wrestling. I think he's a better wrestler, but you could say that there's not a lot of damage done from it. So it's like they're both a little bit better in their in their fields, if you like, but the damage isn't there. So, and then often, and more than often than not, Covington's um, gas tank just outlasts people. And he can put up a higher amount of activity in his wrestling with that gas tank. Yeah, and Covington, if if you believe him, he's despite his persona and and sort of he wants to be a known as a party animal and all that kind of BS. But um, he, he says he's actually a really disciplined guy. You know, he doesn't get more than ten pounds overweight. We were talking about Paddy earlier. And uh, welterweight's his natural weight, so uh, his layoffs maybe have been good. Maybe he's strategized. Maybe he's improved on a certain fighting aspect. You know, stand up, more wrestling, grappling, submissions. We'll find out. But I, I think he be, behind that uh, mask. I think he is quite a disciplined guy. I know. I know it ruins it for a lot of people. But there's a video that came out a couple of years ago about a. Uh, like a young teenager who flagged Covington down in an airport and just said, look, I've just joined a gym because I was being bullied. What are your tips to, you know, succeed in the gym mm. while I'm learning martial arts? And Covington, I can't remember his, obviously all the answers that he gave, but he stood there for like five, ten minutes and talked mm. to the kid about the discipline mm. and gave him a lot of knowledge. And the video was posted online somewhere and I think a lot of people saw it and was like, oh, you know, wow, this, this guy is an idiot. You know, he's not mm. running around after Trump and mm. with all these women that he posts pictures with. Mm. I think it, it, it's it's obvious it's a persona. Um, I'm pretty sure he said it in an interview in, in the early days where he was going to get cut in Brazil. Yeah. And he kind of turned heel, to use a wrestling phrase. Yeah. He turned the bad guy and it saved his career, arguably. Mm. So... I think he does it very well and a lot of people forget that but it is a persona and I think he probably is one of the most um, knuckle down guys in the in the UFC he's yeah. very 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 good yeah. people want to see him knocked out but he is extremely good and he, he can take mm. a punch he, he, I know in the first fight he got stopped right at the end with 30 seconds left but Usman hit him with some big shots and remember what Usman did to Masvidal Masvidal was uh, still spinning two years later. I, I, I gotta be honest. I think that and that that fight ending was a little bit of a fix. Mm. It was right at the end. Mm. I think he was all right. I think he would have gone to the end, and he probably would have lost because he was he was mashed up. Yeah, you know, his face was was really damaged. Mm. Uh, I think he walked out of that fight with um, like a broken jaw. I think completely. But he went five rounds and was essentially a bit of a punching bag. And it got called off when it probably shouldn't have. So uh, he's got an amazing chin. And Edwards is a guy who I can't see putting a huge amount of damage on until the head kick against Usman. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a huge amount of match of damage on, on each of them. 
So yeah. I think for somebody who hasn't got a lot of damage output like Edwards, I think Covington that will suit him fine. Yeah, yeah. I think what I think I think the downfall against Usman was that he just got a lot of damage done um damage done to him. Yeah. And remember uh, Covington, I think three, four, maybe four years ago, he fought Robbie Lawler for five rounds and Robbie was still pretty much at the top of his game. I think he just lost the title, Robbie Lawler. And, you know, he's a devastating puncher. So uh, Covington is, is tougher than he looks and tougher than he sounds. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think one of the major questions, as always, whenever we talk about these fights where a guy's been out for a lot of, long time, how is he going to look? Because you, you don't know. I mean, we don't know about the training footage that he puts out. We don't know how edited that is. How good is he really looking? And um, uh, we're not really going to know that until fight night. Mm. And and Edwards, he's had two fights this year. Were, were they both this year the the Usman fights, or was one back in the last year? I can't remember. I think one was summer last year. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's say within a 15 month period he, he's been champion you know he's, he's been champion and defended his championship so he'll, he'll be uh, mentally at the top of his game Edwards Yeah I think so um, obviously a lot more well oiled than Covington has been but I think he kind of Edwards even though it's been on a fantastic run right and he, he, the last time he lost was in 2015 it has been a fantastic run for sure him obviously being English, it gets it has got my support from for mm-hmm. a number of years. Yeah, but I think he kind of slots into that Covington role when Usman was the champion. That Leon Edwards is the best of the rest. Mm. Um, the, the question is, uh, so, so arguably, really, this fight between these two guys is they're both the best of the rest, and they always have been. So, who is the best? Um, I think Edwards slots into the best of the rest role better than Covington does at this point I would say yeah yeah so um, prediction wise I don't think it's going to be a finish but I think Covington will get the win by unanimous decision Mm -hmm. I'm I'm thinking Covington as well I'm favouring a a decision because of the cardio and and both of them haven't really got lethal knockout power. Um, but for some reason, I'm thinking Covington could get a KO, make a statement. History doesn't show that, but uh, maybe he can time it this time around. That'd be good to see. That'd be good to see. I don't think, I don't think he's had a KO win for a number of years. Mm. So uh, I think the last TKO he had was a, was an injury to Woodley. And I think before that, did he finish Damien Meyer on ground and pound? Or he put him in a pool of blood, but uh, yes, yeah, I think it ended a decision. But yeah, was was very violent and dominant. But I, th- I, th- I think I think I think it's going to be a great fight for sure. It, it hurts me to say Covington, but because mm. you know, obviously Edwards is, is, is English, British. British, yeah, but yeah. I, I'm, I look past the Covington persona, as, as I mentioned and touched on earlier on. He is extremely good. Mm. And yes, the persona, you know, doesn't get on with a lot of people. But I think what people need to realise is that is the point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if it it saved his career, arguably. Yeah. So why would he now turn around and stop doing that? People are going to want to watch you get knocked out. It's very similar to sort of the Jake Paul thing. You you big it up. Yeah. Because there's always got to be, you know, it's like a again to touch on wrestling and, you, and professional wrestling. You've got to have a bad guy that yeah. people root against. Mm. Um, and it works and if he does it well and he seems to do it well then why not yeah and the um, the, the build up so Covington he's improved a lot with his the way he talks he's quite funny when uh, Edwards uh, eye poked um, Bilal is it Mohammed Bilal yeah yeah and uh, Ed, Covington started calling Leon Edwards Scissorhands scissor which was quite funny yeah. Um, so he, he has got. It's a shame Covington hasn't got knockout power like McGregor because if you can create a persona but you've got the knockout power, then obviously your highlight reel is, goes everywhere and you, you become mainstream. And 
but uh, if he had that knockout power and had six or seven knockouts in a row, then he could be at that level. But he's not. Yeah, and there's there's no doubt about it. He he knows it himself. It is a bit cringy, mm. but it, it also it, it kind of airs on the the side of of entertaining cringe. Yeah, it's more like a wrestling, like you said, type of persona. Yeah, yeah, it's not like the Henry Cejudo. Mm go away cringe where you just you just literally cannot listen to him speak yeah you want to listen to him speak to find mm. out the funny cringy names he gives them and you know walking out to press conferences with the Donald Trump Burke and yeah with an orange he suit has the yeah. support of the best president uh, ever yeah it, listen he, he knows what he is he knows what he's doing and we all fall for it we all fall for it a lot but it's fun yeah I, I like it and yeah uh, I, I mention this a lot mm. when I do predictions about the UFC and what they probably want to happen. I think Colby Covington moves the needle a lot more than Leon Edwards does. Yeah, yeah. It might be a hot take, but I, th- I, I think it, not just because he's American, but I just think people will tune in to want to either support him or watch him get knocked out. Yeah. Leon Edwards potentially kind of just a, like a, yeah, he's a nice guy. Mm. kind of vibe about him yeah the press conference going to be it's not going to be a back and forth it really um, Edwards is a nice guy and, and he just wants his fighting to do the talking whereas Covington sees it as a business and he wants to fight and to talk and make money on both yeah, yeah I, th- I think Covington will dominate the press conferences to be quite honest mm. I'm surprised that I haven't heard too much from the fight build up yet mm. I know we're two weeks out yeah uh, but maybe I just haven't looked hard enough or maybe maybe Covington is taking a, a bit more of a quiet approach while he's coming to the end of his camp and maybe he'll ramp up the the yeah. line games come fight week I don't often watch it but I think UFC embedded on YouTube will be a must watch with Colby Covington on it yeah Okay, uh, we yeah that brings us to the to the end of this podcast. That's UFC two ninety six, Edwards versus Colby Covington, and that's going to be on December the sixteenth in Las Vegas, the fight capital of the world, in the T Mobile Arena. And um, Matt, you'll probably be watching that live tweeting. Yeah, for sure. At purely MMA on Twitter. Um, if we can't get over to obviously American fights, we try and live tweet most of the events. Um, this is going to be a huge card for sure. So ending the year strong um, and getting ready and for the next year because that's going to be a big one for sure. Mm. And um, we've got some good articles on purelymma.co.uk, purelymma.co.uk. So head over to there and. Uh, there's regular articles going up now from us, Matt. Yes, yes, there absolutely is. And it's kind of an extension um, from the Twitter. I, I set up the Twitter page to create discussion points for our followers to all get involved. And that's the kind of style that I go for on the website. I try and make sort of shorter articles, which are easy to read through, create your own opinion on it and comment on that so yeah check it out at purely mma on twitter and purely mma.co.uk okay that brings us to the end of the podcast matt so thank you for your input and co-hosting pleasure as always appreciate it as always so um yeah this has been the mma shower podcast uh, ufc 296 um, sponsored by hattonjameslegal.co.uk and overst events overstevents.com and uh, a big thank you to SRB Media for all their support. So, uh, yeah, have a good uh, good end of the year and uh, Happy New Year and all that. And, uh, yeah, good evening, good afternoon and uh, good morning, wherever you may be. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>